In Rewind, you are competing against each other and against the clock. When the game begins, the category teaser screen appears, and a player is designated to choose the category for the first challenge. The categories are pop culture, places, books and words, movies, events, TV, sports, politics, people, and science. If it's your turn, your name will appear here at the top left corner of the screen. The teaser will hint as to that specific category's subject matter, along with an icon representation. Select the category you want by scrolling and selecting using the cursor buttons on your remote. As soon as you have made your selection, the game is on. All players get to answer the rewind question using their individual remotes, and all players are playing for a maximum of 900 points per question. When you think you know the answer, make your choice from the options provided you by pressing A, B, C, or D at the top of your remote. When you enter your answer, a color bar the same as your remote's color will appear here at the bottom of the screen. If you change your mind, you can change your answer by using one of your retakes. Press your new answer choice and an extension to your color bar will appear on screen. You can do this only once per question. As the question progresses, a series of clues provides you with more information, making your choice easier. But remember, the longer you wait to answer, the fewer points you'll receive. If you answer incorrectly, you will receive no points. When the time is up, the answer is revealed, followed by a scoreboard. At this point, you can proceed to the next challenge by pressing the Next button, or if you'd like to watch the question a second time, you can press the Replay button. All players are provided with five retakes at the start of each game. You use these to correct your answer, but also as point getters. They are redeemable at game's end for 300 points each, so the more you have, the more you can cash in. Use them wisely. The player with the lowest total score chooses next, and if their point total exceeds 500 on that question, they receive a bonus retake. Interspersed in each game are bonus features in Rewind, true or false, and news or not. For true or false, you are asked to decide if a fact presented to you is true, or if we made it up, and we ask you to bet on it. If you are not sure, bet the minimum 300 points. If you are pretty sure, wager 600. And if you are all but certain, lay down the maximum 900. Be careful, however. If wrong, you are penalized that number of points. After the last player has wagered, indicated by a color-coded triangle, play begins. The game will wait until all players have entered their choice before giving the answer. News or Not asks you to discern which of three outrageous headlines actually appeared in a real newspaper. Again, we ask you to wager 300, 600, or 900 points. The player who combines the best gameplay with the best strategy has the best chance at winning. And that's Rewind. Have fun! The Partridge Family, which wowed TV audiences from 1970 to 74, was based on this real-life musical family. There were six brothers, one sister, and their mom in the band. Dad used to drive them to gigs in the family station wagon. Their first big hit, which made it all the way to number two on the charts, was The Rain, The Park, and Other Things. They were almost a one-hit wonder until they recorded the title track for the musical, Hair. The Cowsill kids were approached to play the roles of the children on the Partridge family, but they turned it down after learning that, instead of their real mom, actress Shirley Jones would play their mother.
The founder of this restaurant chain got his start running four Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurants for Colonel Sanders. He sold that chain and used the proceeds to start up his own, the first of which opened in Columbus, Ohio in 1969. This fast food chain took dead aim at McDonald's with the popular 1984 slogan, Where's the beef? Founder Dave Thomas, who would later become the company's spokesperson, named the restaurant chain after his daughter. Where's the Beef actress Clara Peller became a pop icon, but unfortunately it didn't last. After appearing in a Prego Plus spaghetti sauce commercial saying, I found it! Wendy's fired her saying, Clara can find the beef only in one place, and that is Wendy's. This Broadway hit was billed as the new musical lovingly ripped off from the motion picture. Mike Nichols won a 2005 Tony Award for his direction and the play won for Best Musical. In Act 1, you can sing along with the fish slapping song, and in Act 2, toe tap to, you won't succeed on Broadway. Eric Idle was nominated for this adaptation of Monty Python and the Holy Grail, but he, like King Arthur, came up short in his quest. The French Taunter, Tim the Enchanter, the Black Knight, and the Knights Who Say Knee are all there, with the title for the play coming from the line in the 1975 film, I eat jam and ham and spam a lot. Philadelphia is the former name, until 635 A.D., of Amman, Jordan. Place your bets. Let's play. True. No word what its cheesesteak sandwiches were like back in the day. This son of a McCarthy-era blacklisted director took out a full-page ad in the Washington Post criticizing President Bush. Always intense, he served 32 days in jail in 1987 for hitting a movie set extra who dared to snap his photo. He dated singer-songwriter Jewel and was married to pop icon Madonna for four years. His Oscar-winning speech for Mystic River was, If there's one thing that actors know, other than there weren't any WMDs, it's that there is no such thing as best in acting. Calling on President Bush to end a cycle of violence and criticizing him for his simplistic and inflammatory view of good and evil, the ad cost Penn $56,000. But it wasn't money well spent, because shortly afterwards, Bush admitted he never reads the newspapers. When Al-Qaeda operative Ahmed Rassam was arrested in 1999, he was planning to bomb this California landmark. A major U.S. tourist destination, it receives a staggering 55 million visitors every year. In 2002, Mayor James Hahn unveiled a $9 billion plan to upgrade the facility and its security. 
Heather Locklear and Blair Underwood starred in LAX, a TV show based on Rassam's Target. The airport, which has suffered some high-profile security breaches in its history, was originally and aptly named Mines Field after William W. Mines, the real estate agent who brokered the land deal back in 1928. Which of these headlines is true? Eight-year-old fight simulator geek lands jetliner. Camp David threatened by deer. Married couples celebrate 50th anniversary. Exchange first words. Place your bets. Let's play. Too many deer roam the woods surrounding the presidential retreat, and the government is considering using National Park Service sharpshooters to control the approximately 900 white-tailed varmints. Other alternatives include fencing, repellents, or using contraceptives. On Friends, this veteran actor played the father of Matthew Perry's character, Chandler Bing. Born in June of 1954 in Springfield, Missouri, this actor's early screen credits include The Man with Two Brains and Pritzi's Honor. This actor once voiced a character who wasn't bad, just drawn that way. Starring opposite Michael Douglas became a habit for this actor, appearing in Romancing the Stone and Jewel of the Nile. This slugger once claimed to be the second most important black player in baseball history. Baseball legend Leo DuRocher's scouting report read, He's a butcher in the outfield and he's got a big mouth. He once noted that the only difference between him and other Yankees heroes was skin color. His rocky relationship with Yankees manager Billy Martin included a dugout fight on national TV in 1977. In 1978, the shameless Jackson launched a self-named candy bar. Teammate Catfish Hunter noted that when you unwrap a Reggie bar, it tells you how good it is. This future president filed a report with the International UFO Bureau after sighting a flying saucer in 1969. So, during his presidential campaign, he promised to expose the truth of any cover-ups. While in the White House, he tasked the Stanford Research Institute to study extraterrestrial communication. In 2002, he won the Nobel Peace Prize for his many selfless humanitarian contributions. But Jimmy Carter's message of peace was not just for Earth. On the Voyager spacecraft sent outside of our solar system in 1977, he wrote, Our hope and our determination and our goodwill in a vast and awesome universe.
When the pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock, one of the first natives they met had lived in England for many years. Where's your bay? True! Squanto was kidnapped from his village by a British captain around 1605. He lived in England for nine years and eventually made it back to Massachusetts in 1619. By that time, he had crossed the Atlantic a total of six times. His was the most expensive musical instrument ever sold at auction. It went to an anonymous American buyer at the Christie's Auction House in May of 2005 for over $2 million. To this day, his hometown of Cremona, Italy is renowned as the center of musical instrument manufacturing. The instrument, known as the Lady Tenant, was made by the violin master in 1699. Recent studies indicate that Stradivari may have used wood from an old cathedral for the construction of his Stradivarius, or Strad, instruments, which might be a reason for their unique brilliance and hefty price tags. The first U.S. presidential election vote from space was cast by Commander Chow aboard this space project. The first space tourist, Dennis Tito, spent $20 million to visit space and dock to this space motel. The first space wedding took place from here when Yuri Malenchenko and Ekaterina Dmitriev tied the long-distance knot. The first truly international space venture, it is a joint project of six space agencies. Orbiting the Earth every 92 minutes at an altitude of 360 kilometers, almost one quarter of all astronauts who have flown into space have been to the International Space Station. And that's not including the thriving tourist trade. For most of the 1970s, they were listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as the loudest rock band in the world. Renowned for their fabulous live shows, Q Magazine named them number 7 on the list of the 50 bands to see before you die. But those in the know knew not to get too close to the stage because of the danger of being hit by smashed musical instruments. In their 60s, they still plan on touring, despite their signature hit, My Generation, containing the line, Hope I die before I get old. Pete Townsend, who was the main instrument smasher, now puts his destructive tendencies to good use. He donates the assorted bits and pieces of his guitars to be auctioned off for charity.
This lavish Las Vegas landmarks construction was funded by a loan from the Teamsters Union Pension Fund. Its famous fountains almost killed Evil Knievel, but son Robbie made the jump 22 years after his dad's crash. In 2005, Sergio Mora won $1 million on The Contender, a reality TV show staged at this boxing mecca. The owner spent $95 million to build a 4,100-seat coliseum just for Celine Dion's new show. Jay Sarno built Caesar's Palace for $24 million and sold it three years later for $60 million. In 1995, Sin City's Symbol of Extravagance, which paid Frank Sinatra $100,000 a week to entertain guests in 1967, was sold again, this time for the tidy sum of $1.7 billion. When this was first published, bookstores didn't want to carry it, claiming that the title insulted their customers. Clearly the customers didn't care because it became an instant bestseller. From there, a series of books was created, covering such diverse subjects as parenting, puppies, and pregnancy. Be a dummy? The answer is C. Press the letter C. It's between the letters B and D. Press it now before the time runs out. This series is translated into 39 languages and is distributed to more than 40 countries. That means there are millions and millions fewer dummies aimlessly roaming the planet right now. Roxy Roker, mother of trendy rocker Lenny Kravitz, was a successful 1960s jazz singer. Place your bets. Let's play. False! Roker was an actress who starred on the hit sitcom The Jeffersons. She passed away in 1995. This was the first movie to win a special effects Oscar when up against a member of the Star Wars franchise. The film's story makes numerous references to historical and literary myths, including Alice's adventures in Wonderland. It popularized the use of the special effect bullet time, which slows down a moment in time and allows the camera to orbit around the scene at normal speed. That way, the audience got to get a good look from all angles at the movie star Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Directors Andy and Larry Wachowski, who wrote and visualized the world of the Matrix, are billed simply as the Wachowski brothers. This painting's been cut, stolen, forged, burned by acid, and hit by a rock, yet it's still estimated to be worth $600 million. Originally called La Gioconda, it was first purchased by Francis I of France for the princely sum of 4,000 acus. A theory made popular by author Dan Brown in The Da Vinci Code is that it's another self-portrait of the artist. As a well-earned protection measure, it hangs in a climate-controlled enclosure behind unbreakable, non-reflective glass. Maybe Dan Brown is right. 
A computer digital analysis of the facial features of Leonardo and of the Mona Lisa revealed that both faces align perfectly. Which of these headlines is true? Full page ad taken out by prisoners protesting lack of big screen TV. Wishbone hijacking concerns cause cancellation of U.S. flights over Turkey. Man sues over undercooked carrots. Place your bet. A full-page ad appeared in the Mexican daily newspaper Reforma, supposedly placed by higher-profile inmates who, according to the ad, were now suffering under subhuman conditions, treated like dogs, like they are worthless and scum of society. The crime? The government confiscated the organized crime leaders' big-screen TVs, computers, and cell phones. They even ended their personal pizza deliveries. This puppet troupe once did a TV pilot that was subtitled Sex and Violence. Their creator was nominated for an Oscar for Best Live Action Short for his experimental film Timepiece. They appeared as recurring characters on a season of Saturday Night Live. Daisy, an Israeli, and Hanin, a Palestinian, were created for a Middle East version of Sesame Street. The Muppets are still going strong and even had a film in the 2005 Tribeca Film Festival in New York. The Muppets' Wizard of Oz saw R&B diva Ashanti in the role of Dorothy, playing opposite Kermit the Frog as the Scarecrow. In a bit of typecasting, Miss Piggy starred as the Wicked Witch of the West. Senator Peter Fitzgerald called this football legend as close as you can get to a hero in Illinois. He declined to run as a Republican Senate candidate in 2004, opting instead to support Alan Key's failed bid. He is the only person to have won a Super Bowl as a player, assistant coach, and head coach. The coach was idolized by superfan leader Bob Swirsky, played by George Wentz on Saturday Night Live. To finance his first film, he raised money by running neighborhood bingo games out of his house. He was studying at a Roman Catholic seminary, but dropped out in order to watch the Detroit Tigers play in the World Series. He attained the rank of Eagle Scout in the Boy Scouts by filming a documentary pointing out various safety hazards and issues within his community. After seeing his bowling for Columbine, Clint Eastwood told him, If you ever show up at my front door with a camera, I'll kill you. An activist always, as a student, Moore won a seat on his school board under a platform based on firing the high school's principal and vice principal. 
By the end of his term, both had resigned. The characters Bert and Ernie on Sesame Street were named after Muppets creator Jim Henson's two toy poodles. Place your bets. Play. False. They were named after Bert the Cop and Ernie the Taxi Driver in Frank Capra's It's a Wonderful Life. This prince is the direct descendant of Stephanie de Beauharnais, one of the daughters of Napoleon Bonaparte. He fought courageously during World War II and was awarded both the Croix de Guerre and the Legion of Honor. He was the world's second longest serving head of state, ranking just below King Rama IX of Thailand. He married Hollywood royalty in 1956 when he made Grace Kelly his wife. He landed the Academy Award winning actress after a year-long courtship described as containing a good deal of rational appraisal on both sides. She was killed in a car crash in 1982. He died in 2005 and was succeeded by his son, Prince Albert. His inventions led to proving that black holes exist throughout the universe and they are at the core of most, if not all, galaxies. 44 years after he first proposed this scientific breakthrough, it finally flew into space. It sent back dramatic pictures of newborn stars emerging in the Eagle Nebula, 7,000 light years from Earth. His vision got off to a rocky start after its 1990 launch. A flawed mirror made it a laughing stock, but it was later fixed during a 1993 spacewalk. Named after famed astronomer Edwin Hubble, who theorized that the universe was expanding, it was Lyman Spitzer who first proposed the idea for a space-based telescope back in 1946. He lived to see it make it into orbit. His official title is Prince of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. His father, like his father before him, rejected his ambition of becoming a professional polo player. Cameras were barred from showing him and his brother during the funeral for his mother, Princess Diana. He sits behind his father and older brother in line for the British royal crown. Two weeks after the 60th anniversary of the liberation of the Auschwitz concentration camp, he caused an international incident by appearing at a fancy dress party sporting a Nazi armband. His grandmother, the Queen, was not amused.
After a Marxist group seized power of this country, the U.S. Army invaded and the Queen of England was not amused. The invasion angered the British government as they weren't consulted beforehand and the Queen was still officially the head of state. U.S. officials cited an airstrip large enough to accommodate Soviet planes and the presence of 600 U.S. medical students as justification for the invasion. The whole thing might have lasted only a few weeks, but that didn't deter Hollywood from making the movie Heartbreak Ridge, starring Clint Eastwood. As Grenada is the world's largest producer of nutmeg, President Ronald Reagan rationalized the invasion this way. Well, you can't make eggnog without nutmeg. The Sting told the story of two Chicago con men set to the music of this American composer. Classically taught, he mastered the piano by age 11, but his true ambition was to create a classical form of ragtime. By 1900, he'd made it to the top of the list of ragtime performers and moved ragtime into the mainstream with hits like The Maple Leaf Rag and The Easy Winners. Although his most recognized piece of music is The Entertainer, most people think it was someone else who wrote it. Sixty years after Joplin's death, his music finally reached the broad audience he was always seeking. Unfortunately, many still assume, after winning the Oscar in 1974 for scoring The Sting, that it was Marvin Hamlish, not Joplin, who wrote The Entertainer. The main ingredient in today's chewing gum is a synthetic plastic. Place your bets. Let's play. True. This ingredient is polyvinyl acetate, a tasteless, odorless chemical compound with a rather unappetizing name. This was the first animated film to be nominated for a Best Picture Academy Award. The Disney production didn't win the Oscar, but it did take home a Golden Globe as Best Comedy Musical. A revolutionary film upon its release, it was the first Disney production to combine traditional and computer animation. It was based on the short story, La Belle et la Bête, written by Jean-Marie Le Prince de Beaumont in 1757. With the creation of the separate category for animated films in 2001, Beauty and the Beast will remain the first and the last animated film nominated for Best Picture. This legendary folk rock and jazz singer-songwriter did not perform at Woodstock. The distinctive voice is most likely the product of being a cigarette smoker since the age of nine. She received a Lifetime Achievement Grammy in 2002, the same year she was given the Order of Canada. She created one of the anthems for environmentalists when she wrote, They paved paradise and put up a parking lot. Mitchell was scheduled to appear at Woodstock but cancelled, 
fearing she would miss a scheduled appearance on the Dick Cavett Show. She wrote the immortal song Woodstock while watching the concert on television. Which of these headlines is true? Sex ed videos work for Panda. New York City cabs declared national monument. Study says heated car seats harm reproductive systems. Place your bag. A four-year-old panda that learned about mating by watching other pandas mate on video became pregnant just months after moving from the United States to her new home in southwestern China. This show makes hopeful sign a form that reads, Embarrassing behavior may lead to public humiliation. Ever image conscious, one competitor was ousted after posing for internet photos wearing lingerie. The old need not apply. A 50-year-old professor filed a complaint with the government charging the show with age discrimination. Yet after all these image issues, he was one of the show's biggest attractions? Maybe they should have made the judges sign that embarrassing behavior waiver. Paula Abdul created waves after a former contestant claimed that he and she had had an affair during the season and that she had coached him. This NBA star's name translates to Little Warrior in Arabic. A warrior for sure, as he was named one of the NBA's 50 greatest players, the youngest member on the list. He's definitely not little. His shoe size is a remarkable 22 triple E. Always fascinated with the police, in 2005, while still an active player, he was sworn in as a U.S. Deputy Marshal. Appearing on The Tonight Show, the 7-foot, 1-inch, 350-pound Shaq was asked by Jay Leno about his police career. Now what kind of work do you want to do? Undercover work? This former KGB agent became the first world leader to have earned a black belt in judo. A serious competitor, he won the senior championship of Leningrad, now St. Petersburg. In 2005, he stated that the collapse of the Soviet Union was the greatest geopolitical catastrophe of the century. While on a state visit to Japan, 10-year-old schoolgirl Natsumi Gomi sent him for a ride. If he hadn't gone off to join the KGB, his boyhood dream was to be a spy. His longtime judo coach believes Putin could have made it to the Russian Olympic team.
Early Dutch traders acquired the entire island of Manhattan from a Native American tribe for a few goods worth around $700 in today's currency. Place your bets. Let's play. True. At the time, however, the joke may have been on the Europeans. The tribe they paid, the Lenape, were actually a nomadic tribe who hadn't settled there or anywhere else. His song about the impact of the Vietnam War was chosen by Ronald Reagan as the theme song for his 84 presidential campaign. The irony increased in 2004 as he organized a concert tour in an attempt to oust President George W. Bush from the White House. His live stadium performances are legendary due to their energy, passion and longevity, most lasting in excess of three hours. Yet on occasion, you can find him startling audiences by performing at the Stone Pony, a popular bar in Asbury Park, New Jersey. Used to working unusual venues, one of his band's first regular gigs was at the local Insane Asylum. Springsteen remembers being terrified. One time, this guy in a suit got up and introduced us for 20 minutes, saying we were greater than the Beatles. Then the doctors came and took him away. Enormous quantities of this everyday compound are required in the construction of an atomic bomb. On Halloween night in 1948, a death fog of this stuff swept over a U.S. Steel Company town, killing 20. Harold Hodge, the leading government defender of the substance, was chief toxicologist on the Manhattan Project. Excessive intake of it over an extended period will cause the yellowing of your teeth. Millions of tons of the highly toxic fluoride were needed in the manufacture of bomb-grade uranium and plutonium for nuclear weapons throughout the Cold War. Touting the benefits of water fluoridation helped the U.S. Army assure citizens of its safety. A practitioner of installation art, his work has been characterized as revelation through concealing. His first significant work was wrapping an empty paint tin with acrylic soaked canvas, then tying it and coloring it with glue, sand and car paint. Along with his partner, their previous work has included wrapping Berlin's Reichstag and Paris's Pont Neuf in fabric. In 2005, their installation of The Gates in Central Park drew both praise and ridicule from New Yorkers. When asked what it means, both Christo and Jean-Claude admit their work, other than to create joy and beauty, has no real point. this celebrity residence and tourist attraction was appraised at a staggering 50 million dollars. 
the total size of the grounds is 2,538 acres and requires 30 employees to manage the upkeep. In 1991, Elizabeth Taylor married husband number eight, Larry Fortinsky, on the grounds. Just outside the famous gates, there is a warning sign that reads, Caution! Children at Play! Jackson had intended to turn the ranch into an orphanage or a hospital for sick children, but financial realities persuaded him otherwise. It went up for sale in 2005 for $94 million, with the proceeds going to his whopping $470 million debt. This soldier survived being shot in the neck fighting in the Spanish Civil War and went on to write a literary classic. Born in India, his real name was Eric Arthur Blair, and he never had a big brother. His other famous work is all about an animal farm, a thinly veiled yet scathing indictment of communism. The adjective Orwellian is now commonly in use describing modern methods of thought control. With constant surveillance and control, and what is perceived as the denial of personal freedoms, many believe the Big Brother state envisaged by Orwell in 1984 may be more truth today than fiction. Academy Award-winning actress Gina Davis represented the U.S. in archery at the 2000 Summer Olympics in Sydney, Australia. Place your bets. Play. False. Davis finished 24th out of 28 competitors at the Olympic team tryouts. In 2004, both he and his wife were honored at Washington's Kennedy Center for their contribution to American culture. He delivered the eulogy at Malcolm X's funeral. Three years later, he spoke at Martin Luther King's funeral. In the 2002 cult film Bubba Hotep, he plays a nursing home resident who thinks he's JFK. He met wife Ruby Dee when he made his Broadway debut in Jeb. The play lasted two weeks. The marriage? 56 years. His acting career spanned seven decades and he appeared in 79 movies. But perhaps he is best remembered for voicing the United Negro College Fund commercials that reminded us that a mind is a terrible thing to waste. After 20 plus years on the air, he is now the highest paid radio personality in the world. Besides a successful radio career, he's also a best-selling author, movie and television producer and even starred in his own film biography. Along with being the highest paid, he's also the highest fined personality in radio broadcast history. Tired of the FCC, the shock jock shocked the radio world, announcing he's taking his obscenely popular act, Uncut, to Sirius Satellite Radio. 
Commercial radio is no longer a safe haven for the king of all media. Citing the Super Bowl and Janet Jackson's breast as what did him in, Stern signed a five-year, $500 million deal with the satellite radio service because the content does not face the restrictions imposed by the FCC yet. Which of these headlines is true? Fatty wins beauty pageant. Senate candidate runs on better sex platform. Florida man looks for missing foot in lost and found. Place Let's your bets. Play. Can Can Chuck McHugh at 400 pounds was declared Miss Jumbo Universe during the 2005 Miss Jumbo Queen Contest in Thailand. A total of 24 contestants were judged on beauty, talent, and most importantly, size. This reality show first ran on Swedish TV with half the Swedish population watching the final episode. Bob Geldof's production company, Planet 24, devised the original concept for the series. Reality TV king Mark Burnett acquired the rights and produces the program for the North American audience. Richard Hatch may not survive an IRS charge that he failed to report the $1 million prize he won on the first American version of the show. Ironically, the most popular survivor of them all never won the game. Rupert Bonham did win a $1 million prize on Survivor All-Stars. However, it was for a popularity vote in which he received 85% of the 38 million votes cast. This athlete lost a 2002 gubernatorial election after he was caught cursing on camera. He was the Republican starting pitcher in the annual congressional baseball game in 1998. In 1999, Peter Jennings called him a young, upwardly mobile, rising young Republican star. Jerry Rice was criticized in 2004 for asking permission to wear his retired number with the Seattle Seahawks. The Football Hall of Famer was twice named to People Magazine's 50 Most Beautiful list. While running his country, this politician found enough time to date Barbara Streisand, Kim Cattrall, and Margot Kidder. The girl who finally landed him, Maggie, was known to hang out both at Studio 54 and with the Rolling Stones. He invoked the War Measures Act in 1970 during a terrorist attack known as the October Crisis. Always flamboyant, cameras caught him pirouetting behind the Queen's back in 1977. When Trudeau was asked how far he was willing to go to defeat Quebec terrorists, his reply was a curt, just watch me. Despite that tough stance, he was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize in 1984.
At Princeton University, students partake in the annual Newman's Day Challenge, consuming 24 beers in 24 hours. Place your bets. Play. True. The origins of the beloved April 24th holiday are attributed to the famous Paul Newman quote, 24 beers in a case, 24 hours in a day. Coincidence? I think not. With a minimum asking price of $20 million per picture, as of 2005, she is the highest paid actress in the world. Her humble beginnings came in the film Satisfaction, playing the slutty bass player in an all-girl band led by Justine Bateman of Family Ties fame. Her first $1 million paycheck came playing opposite a creepy Patrick Bergen in Sleeping with the Enemy. She cemented her high-priced status, winning an Oscar for her portrayal of Aaron Brockovich, which became the highest-grossing movie based on a true story. Not only is Julia Roberts Hollywood's priciest, but she is also one of Hollywood's best-looking, or so says People magazine. Roberts has cracked the magazine's list of the 50 most beautiful people nine times, while topping the list a record three times. This day was the longest recorded day in history. The mean length of a day is approximately 86,400.002 seconds and is increasing by about 2 milliseconds per century. That's due to the Earth's rotation gradually slowing down due to the Moon's gravitational pull. The original length of one day, when the Earth was new, was actually closer to 23 hours. So that means that today, as in this day, is the longest day ever recorded. Until tomorrow. Businesses in this district are required by law to display bright lights and giant signs. It hosted the world's largest tailgate party to help open the National Football League's 2002 season. Its crowds attract many famous buskers and street performers, including naked cowboy John Burke. The dropping of the Waterford New Year's Eve crystal ball has been a tradition there since 1907. Thanks to neon and LED technology, the Great White Way is now a lot more colorful and profitable. In 2000, a 240-foot light-emitting diode sign was constructed for $37 million on 42nd Street. The sign is leased by NASDAQ for $2 million a year. This company, which employs around 40,000 people, is the world's largest commercial aircraft manufacturer. 
Richard Branson plans to put bedrooms on six of its jets, saying, we are legitimizing the Mile High Club. When it launched a new plane that could hold up to 800 passengers, John Stewart joked, or 400 Americans. Much bigger than a bus, its A380 is the largest civil aircraft ever built. The Airbus A380 successfully completed its maiden flight in April 2005. European aircraft maker Airbus spent $13 billion in 11 years developing the double-decker plane. Airbus said the plane could house a bar, jacuzzi, or even a mini casino. This Tony Award-winning play is based on the highest-grossing animated feature film ever made by Disney. Coming out in 1994, it was Disney's 32nd animated feature, and none have topped it since. A musical, it was scored by Elton John and Tim Rice, who both won an Oscar for the soundtrack. For her work on the play, master puppeteer Julie Taymor won two Tony Awards as director and costume designer. Before hitting it big on Broadway, Taymor spent four years living in a mud floor hut while she studied Indonesian puppetry and theater. She used more than 230 puppets in The Lion King. Richard Jewell will live in infamy as the guy who, one month before the 1994 Winter Olympics, kneecapped figure skater Nancy Kerrigan with a metal bar. Place your bets. Let's play. False! Jewell was the security guard, falsely accused of setting off a bomb in the 1996 Summer Olympics in Atlanta. This filmmaker never completed high school, principally because he suffers from a severe case of dyslexia. To get into the film business, he lied on his resume, saying he had acted in the films King Lear and Dawn of the Dead. Very much a film geek, he worked in a video rental store where he honed his encyclopedic knowledge of film. Thus, the reason he pays homage to classic film genres like Kung Fu films in Kill Bill, or B-movies in Pulp Fiction. Faking his resume worked as it got his foot in the Hollywood door. He did leave off some of his real acting experience, however. He once played an Elvis impersonator on an episode of The Golden Girls. Russian and American military worked together to monitor missile launch activity during this event. The U.S. alone spent $100 billion on trying to reduce the impact of this projected disaster. One of the biggest fears was that during the confusion this event could trigger, nuclear reactors might melt down. The military was concerned over an accidental missile launch triggered by a glitch where computers would mistake the year 2000 for 1900. 
As the year 2000 started, the world saw a number of computer boo-boos. Digital meters in taxis in China stopped working. The first baby born in Denmark on January 1st was registered by the hospital computer as being 100 years old. Otherwise, that was about it. Which of these headlines is true? Lenin statue used in Moscow KFC restaurant. Match forfeited after player loses balls. Carl the Whale hauls endangered crew to safety. Place your bets. Let's play. Mark Hemsby had to bow out of the 2005 Bay Hill Tournament after he ran out of balls. Confusion after a rain delay combined with his caddy giving too many away to kids in the gallery. And finally, an errant shot on the 18th resulted in the forfeit. He graduated summa cum laude from Harvard and was also the two-time president of the Harvard Lampoon. He got his start with Saturday Night Live where, amongst other things, he wrote The Girl Watchers for John Lovitz and Tom Hanks. Also a writer and producer for The Simpsons, he considers Marge vs. The Monorail to be his best work. NBC announced in 2004 that he would replace Jay Leno as the host of The Tonight Show in 2009 when his contract expires. On his 10th anniversary show, Mr. T gave Conan a gold chain with the number 7 on it, reminding him that it was in fact the 10th anniversary. Mr. T said, I know that fool, but you only been funny for 7. At one time, all four of these teams played in this major sports league. Beware of the trick, none of the teams really exist anymore, except for one, kinda. This is the oldest sports league in North America, dating all the way back to 1884. The championship trophy, the Grey Cup, was donated by Governor General Earl Grey in 1909 to the team winning the Football Championship of Canada. The CFL expansion to the United States was abandoned after three years and the Stallions moved to Montreal becoming the Alouettes. But on the Grey Cup it still states that in 1995 the football champion of Canada was Baltimore. He topped the 2005 poll that asked Americans who is the all-time greatest U.S. president. Maybe everyone loves him because of the food. He was the president who declared Thanksgiving a national holiday. He was first in a lot of things, like being the first president elected from the Republican Party. Tragically, he was also the first American president to be assassinated after John Wilkes Booth shot him at Ford's Theater. Behind Abe in order comes Ronald Reagan, Franklin D. Roosevelt, JFK, Bill Clinton and George W. Bush. George Washington might have been the first president, but on the 2005 list he only ranks 8th.
A big ballpoint pen is all it takes to pick the virtually unbreakable kryptonite bicycle lock. Place your bets. Play. True. It works just about perfectly. And now the manufacturer will replace or upgrade their unpickable locks for free. That's if their owners can find them. This college dropout holds the title of Knight Commander of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire. The lack of schooling didn't stop him from buying the Codex Lester, a collection of the writings of Leonardo da Vinci. The world's largest donor to charity, his foundation provides 90% of the world budget for the eradication of polio. In 1999, he and his wife made the largest single charitable donation by living people, five billion dollars. As of 2005, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has endowed to numerous charities close to 30 billion dollars. But imagine how much he would have been able to give if he'd stayed in school. Only two years after its introduction in 1998, this drug became the most prescribed antidepressant ever. Popping this pill, according to the producer, helps produce more serotonin and therefore the feeling of happiness. However, it received some bad press over reports linked it to suicidal tendencies. A cultural phenomenon, it spawned a best-selling book and a movie starring Christina Ricci. Due to the bad press, Prozac has been replaced as the top prescribed antidepressant on the market by Zoloft, which in 2004 had worldwide sales of $3.36 billion. Actor George Clooney lambasted this news pundit for lying and irresponsible reporting in an email in 2005. A jock turned journalist, he played semi-pro baseball and even had a tryout with the New York Mets. He's the author of five books, including the novel Those Who Trespass, which has been optioned by Mel Gibson for a movie. His cable news program is the most watched in the U.S., and in 2003, he was named the third most popular TV personality behind Oprah Winfrey and David Letterman. Some people love him and some hate him, and maybe no one more so than comedian, writer, and political commentator Al Franken. Franken's distaste for O'Reilly is so strong that he devoted an entire chapter to him in his book, Lies and the Lying Liars Who Tell Them. This English landmark has been the site of an attempted terrorist bombing and an invasion by topless protesters. 
The palace, with its thousand rooms, lies on the west bank of the River Thames in London and dates back to 1097. November 5th is Guy Fawkes Day in England. Fireworks are set off on the anniversary of his attempt to blow this place up in 1605. In 2004, women went topless to protest the ban on fox hunting. Since this is a family game, we're just showing you the fox. Originally serving as a royal residence, no monarch has lived in Westminster since the 16th century. Now it's home to the House of Lords and the House of Commons and the clock tower universally known as Big Ben. This newspaper circulation comes in second worldwide for English language broadsheets. Considered quite risky when it first hit the presses, it endured heavy losses for many years before achieving profitability. With its short news items and lots of photos, it was quickly nicknamed the McPaper. Ironically, McDonald's now distributes it. Larry King was hired on as its first columnist in 1982, but was let go in 2001 because the paper is trying to be trendier and newsier. USA Today has the widest circulation of any newspaper in the United States, averaging over 2.25 million copies every weekday. That's just behind number one in the world, the Times of India. The fight-filled National Hockey League hands out an annual award called the Lady Bing Trophy. It goes to the most gentlemanly player. Place your bets. Let's play. True. Past winners include hockey icon Wayne Gretzky, who won it four times. But most players don't consider it a particularly large honor. This film critic wrote the screenplay for the 1970 Russ Meyer movie, Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. That may have been a bomb, but he became the first writer to win a Pulitzer Prize for criticism. Writing on film since the 60s, he is the long-standing critic for the Chicago Sun-Times newspaper. Popularity grew after he co-hosted the TV Sneak Preview Show with Chicago Tribune reviewer, the late Gene Siskel. <laughs> Studios market their latest releases around a two-thumbs-up ranking from Ebert and his new partner, Richard Roper. The thumbs-up phrase has even been trademarked by Ebert to ensure no one else can use it. This tops the list of the most requested books by the Islamic terror suspects at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. The Pope is unimpressed, as he's concerned its readers could be prevented from developing a sense of good and evil. Greenpeace isn't either, as they called for a U.S. boycott of this book due to it not being printed on recycled paper, which could have saved 200,000 trees. Forbes magazine is, however, as they named its author, J.K. Rowling, as Britain's most powerful woman of 2005. Sales of the book are expected to break all modern fiction publishing records, most of which were set by the last installment in the series, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix.
which of these headlines is true? Children forced to marry dogs. Court rules teachers can't look at students the wrong way. Weather too unpredictable to predict. Place your bay. Following traditional wedding protocol, the Indian villagers of Jharkhand performed the tribal ceremony to ward off evil spirits by having two boys and two girls marry dogs. They assured the press and attendants that they were all of the opposite sex. The longest-running cartoon in TV history, The Simpsons, got its start as a short segment on this TV variety show. The Simpsons were initially meant to be minute-long buffers before and after commercials on this Fox program. Series regulars Dan Castellaneta and Julie Kavner chipped in to provide voices for the animated characters. The show's host was a versatile performer whose hit song, They Don't Know About Us, starred Paul McCartney in the video. Tracy's show went off the air in 1990. The Simpsons had the real staying power. The first line spoken was Bart asking Homer, What is the mind? Is it just a system of impulses or is it something tangible? Homer's response, Relax! What is mine? No matter. What is matter? Never mind. This tennis player retired with the highest winning percentage, male or female, in tennis history. With a loss of the 1987 U.S. Open, this player's 14-year string with at least one Grand Slam singles title came to an end. The first major win came at Wimbledon in 1974, with the last at the French Open in 1986. Once engaged to Jimmy Connors, she was married to pro tennis player John Lloyd for much of her career. Not as physically gifted as most of her opponents, Everett had such focus that at the end of a match, her hand was often cramped around the racket, forcing her to pry her fingers loose. In 2002, People magazine declared this politician to be one of the sexiest men alive. Slate magazine praised his method of speaking as poetry. For example, as we know, there are known knowns. There are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. So far, he is both the youngest and the oldest to hold his cabinet position in American history. In 2004, he told U.S. troops, You go to war with the army you have, not the army you might want. After the magazine's publication, George Bush called him his matinee idol for the seniors. Henry Kissinger once said he was the most ruthless man I have ever met, and I mean that as a compliment. In 2005, with a payroll in excess of $200 million, the New York Yankees hired a motivational coach. Place Let's your bets. Play. True. 
The Yankees hired Chad Bowling as their director of optimal performance to handle motivational and mental skills issues for both players and coaches. The team then got off to their worst start in 14 years. This pop vocalist was the only artist to score a number one hit single in each and every year of the 1990s. Her string of singles spent a combined total of 63 weeks atop the charts, a total second only to that of the king, Elvis Presley. All those hits and her five octave vocal range made her the third biggest selling female singer in U.S. history behind Madonna and Barbra Streisand. She was named after the number one hit song, They Call the Wind Mariah, which was taken from the 1951 Broadway musical, Paint Your Wagon. Mariah Carey was given another name during her high school years. Her classmates decided to call her Mirage because she never showed up for class. Despite her lack of education, as of April 2005, Carey had earned an estimated fortune of $427 million. This 1969 U.S. Department of Defense project was conceived as protection against nuclear attack. A product of the Advanced Research Projects Agency, ARPA, it was developed by four universities in California and Utah. Its existence was finally revealed to the public in 1972. By 1983, it had essentially been taken over by private commercial concerns. From the original four military computers networked together in 1969, as of 2005, it has grown to more than four billion. ARPANET was initially intended as a method for computers to communicate with one another if traditional communication channels were destroyed. After handing it over to companies like AOL and Sprint, the military created their own exclusive network, Milnet. <laughs> 